What is up guys, Maxi from Poker Bounty bringing you today one of the most classic poker stories from the poker vaults. Now there have been many interesting poker stories since the past decades but none of them even come close to the one involving poker's elite players versus a single businessman. This is the story of the corporation versus Andy Beal. The corporation was a group of professional poker players led by Doyle Brunson, the so-called godfather of poker. The story of how they came together and formed a $10 million syndicate to defeat a billionaire banker is one of the greatest tales of poker lore ever recorded. Their adversary was Andy Beal, a Texas-based businessman who has never played poker seriously before March of 2001. He was the founder and chairman of Beal Bank and Beal Aerospace Technologies, listed by Forbes magazines as one of the wealthiest men in the United States. While on a visit to Las Vegas, Beal dropped by the poker room at the Bellagio to play a little 15-30 limit hold'em. When he got on a winning streak, the banker upped his game, first to 8160 table and then to one with stakes of $400-$800. That's when Doyle Brunson's son, professional poker player Todd Brunson, took notice of the high roller and invited him to play a heads-up game. Shockingly, the Texans' luck held true and he defeated the young pro rather easily. Word of the upset quickly spread to the high stakes section of the poker floor, Bobby's room, where some of the top players in the world gathered regularly to compete in $4,000, $8,000 games. They challenged Beal to join them and before the day was done, the outsider had taken the pros for $100,000. Anxious to get their money back, the regulars demanded a rematch but Beal was too clever to fall into any traps. He knew that they could easily gang up on him and collude to see that he would lose. So instead of agreeing to their terms, he made a counteroffer. He would play any one of them or all of them in heads-up matches one-on-one. -on -one. Even though many of the top poker pros were multi-millionaires, none of them could afford to take on Beal without risking their entire bankroll. And they certainly didn't want to do that. Neither did they want to miss out on a potential sucker. So they formed the corporation. They pulled their money and the money from their investors to take on a man probably seen as the biggest gravy train to ever come to Vegas. The corporation consisted of 16 players, each initially putting up half a million dollars each. The players were Doyle Brunson, Phil Ivey, Chip Rees, Jennifer Harmon, Howard Lederer, Gus Hansen, Xiao Jiang, Barry Greenstein, Ted Forrest, John Hennigan, Todd Brunson, Hamid Dasmalchi, David Gray, Ming La, Lyle Berman, and Lee Salem. Johnny Chan also got involved at various points. Beginning in 2001, Andy Beal vs. The Corporation became one of the most talked about events in Las Vegas. It was a series of confrontations lasting up to a week at a time and spread out over the course of three years. Early in the matchups, Beal beat the pros out of $5.3 million. Later he lost $3.4 million back to them. The tug of war dragged over to 2002 and then continued to 2003. Many wondered how an obvious amateur could go toe to toe with some of the world's best poker players and fare so well for so long. But what Andy Beal lacked in experience, he more than made up for in wealth. He realized that if the stakes were high enough, the pros would play scared, afraid to lose their friends money. He could intimidate them by increasing the blights to $100,000, $200,000 well over their heads and far beyond their comfort zones. At the Bellagio on Thursday, May 13, 2004, the richest poker game of all time took place. In total, the corporation had brought $20 million to the table. One by one, Beal faced off against his opponents, first Hamid Dasmalchi and then Chip Reese, Hansen, followed by Jennifer Harmon. When their marathon session ended, the banker had defeated the pros, relieving them of $11.7 million. Beal could have ended it right there, and he certainly should have. He had nothing more to prove, but the taste of victory was just too sweet and in early of February 2006, the confrontation resumed. Beal went to Las Vegas to play in a $50,000, $100,000 limit hold a match at the Wynn Casino. These are the events that happened day by day. Wednesday, February 1st. The high limit area of the Wynn Poker Room was roped off, open only to Beal and members of the corporation and Michael Craig, the author of The Professor, The Banker and The Suicide King. The stakes were negotiated and the corporation opted for $30,000, $60,000 limits but Beal insisted that the blinds set to $25,50,000 with $50,000, $100,000 limits. The first player was heads-up specialist Todd Brunson and after 5 hours of intense counteraction, Beal was up $1.6 million. Thursday, February 2. Jennifer Harmon challenged Beal until the dinner break, winning $1 million back. David Gray and Ted Forrest took their turns at the felt, 
losing a million dollars again and essentially breaking even for the day. Friday, February 3rd. Ted Forrest was back and Beal employed a more aggressive style, but Forrest was unaffected by Beal's change in technique and ended the day with a $2.5 million surplus over the past three days. Saturday, February 4th. Forrest returned but Beal appeared focused and determined not to suffer a similar slide to the day before. Play ended at 7.30 p.m. with no substantial gains for either side. Sunday, February 5th. With the short session with Todd Brunson broke around 4 p.m and Beal was down $3 million for the week. That evening, Andy Beal boarded a plane to Texas. It wasn't clear if he would return for another round of one-on-one -on -one matches, but none were prepared for the events that would transpire over the next few days. On Saturday, February 11th, Beal boarded a plane back to Las Vegas. The local press began reporting and poker enthusiasts around the world were starved for updates. Soon the national press had their own distant coverage and poker forums were alive with speculation, chatter and gossip. Sunday, February 12th. Jennifer Harmon returned to the felt with Doyle Brunson by her side. She had accumulated almost $2 million at midday, but by session's end, she was down $5 million. Monday, February 13th. Todd Brunson had won $2.5 million for the corporation, but with an hour until break, Beald battled back for a $1.2 million surplus in his favor. Tuesday, February 14th, Forrest was able to regain $7 million of the previous losses, but with two hours remaining, Andy had profited $3.5 million. Wednesday, February 15th, Ted Forrest was short stacked and unable to gain momentum. It wasn't long before his chip racks were empty. The corporation had depleted their $10 million bankroll and the game was over for now. Again, that could have been and should have been the end of it. But the corporation demanded an opportunity to get their money back. They were down some $10 million. So it happened that Beale agreed to return on February 21st to 23rd to play with blinds at a 30,000, 60,000 and increased to 50,000 and 100,000. On Monday night, February 20th, 2006, Beale was back on a plane to Las Vegas and checked himself into the wine resort upon arrival. He returned to play a third week of high-stakes Texas Hold'em poker against a new challenger, the corporation's long-term team member, Phil Ivey. Here are the events that transpired from February 21st. Play began in the late afternoon and blinds were set at $30,000, $60,000, lower than the previous $50,000, $100,000 of weeks past. Ivey seemed to hold the lead throughout the day's match. Most felt Ivey had exhibited an aggressive approach. In typical fashion, he sat blank-faced, focused, and his mouth wide agape. Ivy has an intense and intimidating nature at any table, and the one-on-one -on -one competition with Beal only seemed to magnify this trait. Play ended at around 7 p.m., and it appeared Phil Ivy was up several racks. It was confirmed by a member of the corporation that the number was $2 million in Ivy and the corporation's favor. Wednesday, February 22nd. First thing Wednesday morning, Ivy and Beal were again heads up at the felt on table number three at the win. Blinds remained at 30,000, 60,000, and again Ivy seemed to have an advantage over Beal. In less than eight hours of play, Ivy ended the day with another monetary gain of $4.6 million. Thursday, February 23rd. At 9 a.m., Beal and Ivy met for a third and final session. The two players discussed the possibility of raising the stakes while the witnesses remained silent. It took only moments for Ivy and Beal to come to an agreement and the blinds were raised to $50,000 and $100,000. At around noon, the players took a short break. Suddenly, the break was over, Beal was up almost $2 million. From the rail, one could see Beal reaching repeatedly into his rack of chips. Within a few hands, it appeared Ivy had reversed his deficit and was back to even. Members of the corporation began to arrive and could be seen on the sidelines talking discreetly among themselves. They were careful to keep a respectful distance from the table so as not to distract the players. It was just after 1 p.m. when both players suddenly rose to shake hands. After approximately four hours of play, Ivy had recovered his initial losses and won an additional $10 million. The corporation had recovered their $10 million loss since February 1st and earned another $6.5 million in revenue through Ivy's efforts. Andy Bill complimented members of the corporation for their sportsmanship and announced he would be heading home to Texas. He also mentioned that he was done with poker.